what is the most important thing that needs to be addressed in any business or service? Yes, if you are thinking about voice of customers, you are right. Voice of customers is that parameter that should be considered seriously if we want to thrive any business or services. So what is voice of customers? Voice of customers are the customer's expectation or preference for any product or service under discussion. It simply means what customers expect from your products or services. Before diving deep into the voice of customers, let us understand customers first. There may be different kinds of customers and we have to address their expectations or their voice based on their types or preference. We will be learning about four types of customers and their behavior. Type 1, Type 2, Type 3, and Type 4. The Type 1 customers are insignificant customers. What does that mean? That means a customer who doesn't know what he wants and doesn't know that he doesn't know what he wants. He's just roaming around. He doesn't know what he wants and also is unaware of the fact that he doesn't know what he wants. He doesn't know and he is unaware. So these types of customers are called insignificant or type 1 customers. The second type of customers are the humble customers. Type 2 or the humble customers is the customer who doesn't know what he wants and knows that he doesn't know what he wants. He doesn't know what he wants but he is aware that he doesn't know what he wants. So these types of customers are called type 2 customers. Type 3 customers are the sleeping customers. Now what does that mean? Sleeping customers are those customers who know what they want but doesn't know that he knows what he wants. He knows that something is important to him or a product or the service should have certain characteristics or doesn't give much emphasis that he knows what he wants. These are the sleeping customers. And type 4 are the masters or the confident customers. These are the customers who know what they want and knows that they know what they want. They know exactly what they want and they are sure on what they want. Now how to deal with these types of customers? How to address different voices of the customers? There are different approaches for all these customers. For type 1 type of customers, we should be gentle and explain them not about the features but about the benefits that those products or services can bring in to their life. A lot of time the greatest mistake of a salesperson is explaining about different features of the product. They should rather be explaining about the benefits of the products or services to the customers. So dealing with type 1 or insignificant customers is being gentle and they are easily satisfied. We should be gentle and we should explain them about the benefits of the products and services. Now how to deal with the type 2 types of customers? We have to teach and train them. Now these types of customers are also easy to satisfy and we have to teach and train them. As these are the humble customers, they won't pose much problem if we teach and train them about the service or the products. To deal with type 3 or sleeping customers, we have to awake them with different types of advertisement and different types of the presentation. Now we should understand that type 3 and type 4 types of customers are very high in number. Generally type 4 types of customers are high in number. So how to deal with type 4 types of customer? Type 4 types of customers are demanding. They always talk about value. So we should always talk about the real value. If we could provide value or if we could improve the value that the products or services can bring in to the lives, then these types of customers will be willing to purchase your product or services. The differences between type 1 and type 4 customers are type 1 types of customer are very low in number and most of the customers fall in the type 4 category. 
it's easy to satisfy a type 1 customer but for type 4 customers the salesperson should be really trained about the course of the products and services because here the customers are demanding type they are mainly looking for the value in the product and type 4 customers will be comparing your product more with the other products available in the market now let us look a model that can describe different types of customers needs and preferences it's the Kano model. Kano model was originally developed in 1980s by Professor Noriaki. It is based on the customer satisfaction and quality and provides a simple ranking system distinguishing simple and differentiating attributes. So what are the differentiating attributes in Kano model? These are the degree of satisfaction of the customer and degree of implementation of the job in order to meet the needs of the customers. The example at the side denotes a Kano model. We will learn about different terms used in this diagram in the next slides. There are two dimensions of the Kano model. The first is the satisfaction level. It is the range of customer satisfaction and it can go from total satisfaction which means happy or delighted or excited customers to total dissatisfaction are the frustrated customers. They may be excited or frustrated with the product or the product quality that we provide to them. The second one or the second dimension of the Kano model is the implementation level. Implementation level is the range of the implementation and it can go from very below the customer's expectation to higher than customer's expectations or from few features in the product to too many features in the product. So, on the left hand side, we have customer's expectations not fulfilled and towards the right hand side, we have the customer's expectation fully fulfilled. Or, we can also say that on the left hand side, we have the few features on our products or services and on the right hand side or the rightmost side, we have too many features for our products and services. There are different needs or quality that must be addressed in any products and services or say there are different types of needs of the customers that they wish to see in your product or service. The first one is must be quality or the basic needs. Basic needs are the requirements that the customers expect and are taken for granted. When the basic needs are met, the customers won't say anything. And in many instances, they won't even notice. If you think that if the customers won't notice and you will not meet the basic needs, then customers will start to complain if your basic needs are not met. These kinds of needs, if even fulfilled, doesn't cost the customers delight or loyalty, but you may lose customers if they are not present. The example of basic needs, if we are talking about the restaurant business, is the fresh food. The customers expect that the food should be fresh. If you give them the stale food, they will start to complain. They expect that when they visit in your restaurant, the food is fresh. The second example of the basic needs is a clean table. They expect that the table should be clean when they go to the restaurant. This is the basic level of expectation. The table should be clean to the level where they do not see any dust or dirt. And it doesn't matter if you go on signing the table or if you keep on washing the tables and chairs many times a day because basically the customers come to the restaurant in order to have some snacks or dinner or tea etc. So the cleanliness of the table is the basic need. But if you keep the table dirty then they will start to complain. The second type of need is the one dimensional quality or the performance need. So one dimensional quality is also called the performance need. They are the linear satisfaction defining qualities. Now what does that mean? That means when you keep on improving these qualities or these needs of the customers, then the satisfaction level also continuously increases. If you go on increasing the one dimensional quality or the performance needs, the customer satisfaction linearly increases. And if the requirements or the performance needs are decreased, then the customer satisfaction linearly decreases. Example can be taken about the quality per price ratio. 
if you could provide the customers a high quality product in a lesser price then the demand of product or customer satisfaction keeps on increasing if you could provide the highest quality product in the lowest possible price then it will increase the customer satisfaction on the contrary if your price is high or if the price of service or the product that you are rendering to the customers is high and the quality is low then the customer satisfaction linearly decreases one other example is a discount if you go on giving the discounts then the customer satisfaction goes on increasing but this might not be the right approach to run your business or services because you cannot give too much discount on any product or services a right way will be improving the value or quality of your business or services rather than giving discounts the third need that the customers expect to see in the products and services are the attractive quality which are also called the delighters these are those qualities that give more satisfaction when fulfilled but may not cause dissatisfaction when not fulfilled so when the requirements are increased the customer satisfaction increases and when the requirements are decreased or when the delighters or attractive qualities are decreased there is not much impact on satisfaction note that these types of needs are also called exciters sometimes the customers are willing to pay a premium price for these needs but the lack doesn't impact on the satisfaction it should be well noted that over time the delightful innovation becomes another basic needs take for example the earlier restaurant business suppose among the mass of restaurants that do not provide fresh foods one restaurant started providing the very fresh foods the satisfaction of the customers starts increasing and the customers number visiting the restaurants also gets an increasing over the time the customers start to think that this is the basic needs first of all they used to visit your restaurants thinking that your restaurant gives the fresh food but over the time when the all the restaurants start giving the fresh food to the customers then the customers won't come to your restaurant for fresh food because they think all restaurants provide the fresh food they will be coming to your restaurants for other purposes that might be the taste of food that might be the diversity of the food or that might be many other reasons so over the time the delightful innovations becomes the basic needs example is a welcome drink the customers get excited with the welcome drink but if you do not give them the welcome drink also that won't severely affect the satisfaction of the customers another is the indifferent quality and these are those qualities that do not cause satisfaction or dissatisfaction for the customers when added or subtracted from the products or the services when the requirements or when the when these types of qualities are increased there is no effect on the customer satisfaction and there is no effect on customer satisfaction even when these types of needs or qualities are decreased last one is the reverse quality these are those qualities which when used in high degree or in high number or amount will result in the customer's dissatisfaction when the requirements keep on increasing it will cause a decrease in the customer satisfaction because the customer doesn't want too many features on that product and when you go on decreasing these needs these may also affect the customer satisfaction so you should place these needs or these features in your products and services in the optimum level so this is a kano model for one dimensional qualities as you increase the features in your products and services then the customer satisfaction goes on increasing you can see here with the blue arrow these are the attractive qualities these are also called the delighters they won't cause a sharp increase and decrease in the satisfaction of the customers to certain point and after meeting certain point the satisfaction of the customers for certain products and services starts to increase so these are called the attractive qualities or the delighters and the yellow arrow shows the must be qualities these are those qualities that must be present in your products or services note that when you have optimum must be quality the satisfaction level won't be affected but if the must be qualities are not present there will be too low satisfaction or there will be complete dissatisfaction and about reverse quality as i told you as you go on increasing the features in your product or services then 
the satisfaction starts to decrease and this is particularly much important to be noted because you are increasing the features in your products and services but this is ultimately causing the dissatisfaction towards your products and services because the customers just want a simple product suppose the example can be a microwave oven which is very difficult to operate the normal household oven wants a simple microwave oven so if you ultimately go on increasing different features in that oven or suppose if you go on increasing the complication it may affect the satisfaction of the customer <laughs>